Battlefield of Chess. Winners, losers, conquerors, vanquished. There are casualties and there are prisoners. I've experienced the depths of chess prison and the gleeful satisfaction of imposing my will. But anyway, let's see some captured monarchs in some of my games. In this game, I'm playing Mongolia 999. He is from Mongolia, which is good. And I am playing some sort of a, well, you know, a, let me just plan on moving these pawns and go for some big attack. I like going for big attacks. And right here, we can see that I'm transposing into a King's Indian defense, the same-ish variation. So the same-ish variation is, I'm probably saying that wrong, you go to F3 and you go for that big attack. And I've got this lock center. Um, and usually black's going to try to go for a king side attack, but I'm not going to castle. I'm not going to commit my king. That's the whole point of the same ish. It makes it a really fun way to play black. He moves his knight forward here. He forces my bishop back. I actually really kind of like this setup where the bishop is controlling the knight moves. Um, I'm eventually going to be able to play this B4 move if I want to, to kick the knight. Um, that comes up all the time. And right here, this bishop to H6 moves. It's not the right move. And due to tactics, right? So I've opened up this diagonal on my king. And black has the option of capturing, attacking my queen, and then going with a fork to pick up the bishop. Um, luckily, he doesn't see that. We trade right there. The knight moves. I'm trying to restrict the knight moves here with my knight. And with the queen moving, obviously, this is really the only logical move. He moves back, and I go here. This is a mistake. I'm trying to make my attack land, but... The queen capturing here and then going here would pick up both rooks. Um, I get lucky yet again. And with this trade, I castle and we're going king side versus queen side. We see whose attack is going to land first. I've got both of my pawns pushing here. My queen's already in the game. If I could open up one of these files, my rook's going to enter this game versus black. He's potentially going to capture here, move his rook over and then go after my king. Um, let's see what happens. His queen moves over. I push, and right here, I'll give you just a couple seconds to figure out, can you see the devastating blow that's about to happen to me? I'll give you just three, two, and one, and boom. This pawn push to G5 is completely crushing. The pawn covers both these squares. The queen covers this square. The king covers this square. And my queen is stuck here on H6 without any real prospects in the immediate future of getting out let's see how the game progresses i capture capture and we can see that i'm really just trying to well maybe i could get my rooks over here maybe i could somehow get my knight over here um i need to do something because my queen's not participating in this game after this b4 move i have the option to get back into the game here a little bit i can move my Knight up to d4 and then over to f5. And the idea being, if he captures, I can get my queen back reactivated into the game. White would still have a little bit of advantage. I mean, look at the a and b file. My king is looking mighty, mighty weak. I don't see that idea, though. Instead of that, I move back to g1. I'm trying a different way. And black, he pushes forward. I make this a3 move. I don't want to open up more files but that just makes this C2 square even more weak. Um, it's not looking so good. And a couple more moves later, he locks the coffin on my queen, moves to F6. Now the pawn, the rook, and these pawns are completely locking my queen 100% out of the game with no hope at all of getting back in. Now the black queen is free to roam. And I try this idea to get my knight over there, but it's just a little bit too late. I have some crazy tactics here if I do decide to play, you know, e6 here. Um, I don't do that. I try to take the rook. I'm like, well, let me go up material and let me see if I can hold on to this. Um, my opponent makes me dance around. I'm so weak on the light squares, and there's just not much for me to do. You can also see by my clock, I've got four seconds left. There is no increment, so I'm just trying to move quickly and... I'm not able to make it happen. This game goes to my opponent. He plays really well and has this really cool locked, trapped queen. I'm playing down nine points of material, essentially. I mentioned Depths of Despair, which that first game was. This is the gleeful satisfaction. This game opens with the perk. Um, I have an opening video on that, and my opponent plays the Austrian attack. I don't take my own advice 
in that video. The The advice here is to move your bishop and then now to strike back with c5 before you castle. Um, you end up getting this pinned knight with this and this, and it's pretty fun even though you've given up a pawn. Um, instead of following my own advice, um, I kind of mess up here and get a little bit ambitious, and it doesn't quite work out the same way because my opponent is able to fork my rook and my knight. Um, if I decide to move back here and preserve both, I've already given up a pawn, my opponent's up, and so I decide to go with a little bit of gusto. I've got a little bit of an idea here, and right now my opponent would be able to play bishop to d2, and I'd be 100% busted. Um, luckily for me, he goes for the rook, which is a pretty natural move. Um, he is still winning, um, but I have this check, and now I have temporarily trapped his queen. Now, he has a couple ways to get out of this, as we're going to see here. I move my knight up to c6. This is a mistake. This gives white the opportunity to escape with his queen. In my head, I have all the time in the world. Um, I just need to be a little bit vigilant. Um, but white has a tactic right here in order to escape all of his troubles and go on to win this game, honestly. Um, I'm going to give you just five seconds in order to take a look at that. And if you were able to find F5 here, that is the idea. And obviously, I'd be able to take that pawn. But now you'd be able to bring your bishop. You're double attacking. The, the only way to be able to defend that bishop is to go here, um, in which case you'd be able to you know, capture that pawn, um, really, really give yourself a little bit of breathing room, and I'd be completely, completely hosed. Um, instead of that, my opponent captures here. And again, that F5 move was possible. Um, he captures the... F7 pawn. I'm not worried about, you know, recapturing the bishop. I'm worried about getting all my pieces mobilized and I'm able to trade there. Now I have damage structure um, and my opponent is getting weaker and weaker. I bring my rook over with this rook on D8. It's defended by the knight. So I have the opportunity to move my bishop here or here. Um, I capture that pawn. I move my knight rook over. It's still defended. Now I am capturing that queen and it is just a matter of time, a matter of cleaning up this position. And right here, my opponent resigns. And the reason he resigns is because he either has to move to this one of these light squares. There's going to be a discovered attack. I'll be able to pick up that um, rook. Or instead of that, um, what he could do is he could move to this dark square. Um, but then the same thing would happen. I move my bishop. He'd be forced to move over here. And, you know, um, there's probably checkmates, probably something better. I'm already up a ton of material. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more fun chess content like this. I've got one more quick game for you with a trapped queen. A little bit less luck on my part. A little bit more um, greediness on my opponent's part. Let's check it out. We are playing the Dutch defense as black. That's one of my favorite defenses as black. It's really aggressive. You're going for a big attack. I always like going for a big attack. Why the heck wouldn't you on um, this knight to e4 idea? This is really, really common because even if we get a bunch of captures like we do in the game, I'm going to be gaining the center, gaining this open file, and gaining tempo on this knight. So a lot, a lot of good stuff happening here. I move my queen up. I'm defending both of these pawns, and I trade off there, and I end up with a bishop, a dark bishop with all these pawns on dark squares. It's a pretty weak bishop versus a average knight, right? Hopefully eventually this knight will be a good knight. I'll have a good knight versus a bad bishop, but right now it's a, you know, average knight versus a, a good bishop. So let's see how it progresses. Right here, the queen is infiltrating over. I'm saying, you know what? You could go ahead and grab that pawn if you really want to. It's a little bit ambitious if you want to grab it. Um, my opponent does do it. And right here, I have a tactical try in order to gain a big advantage here. I'll give you just a couple seconds to figure out what it could be and if you're able to see it it was pushing here i'm attacking that bishop something needs to be done about that um and so what my opponent does is he captures i recapture with the knight and now miraculously the queen is trapped um the knight's covering this square the pawns and the rooks are covering all the back ranks and then the queen is beautifully covering that last d6 square that was a really, really fun one um, when it happened to the game. I didn't really see it coming ahead of time. I'm like, oh my gosh, his queen's trapped. This is amazing, right? Um, I was just going for a big attack at the time. I got a little bit lucky. 
Um, and then after a little bit here, um, I was able to, you know, bully these pawns a little bit. And right here, actually, my opponent resigns because um, moving your rook up here to one of these squares, threatening checkmate, um, my opponent's going to just have to give up material in order to delay the inevitable. Next week's video is going to be about how to evaluate a position. What does a beginner player need to do to not be completely overwhelmed by all the craziness happening in the game? It's a lot, um, but I boil it down to just a couple principles. Have a great night, guys. I'll see you back here soon.